Doyle. Hometown for Tarek. North Americans only hope of a presence in the grand finals here in New York. Zero expectations on the G2 roster. The juxtaposition of pressure on stage is absurd right now. It's absolutely true. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, your final series of the day. Let's get hyped! Evil geniuses, <laughs> Seaside here, making their way toward the B tunnels. We've got four players there, and they've got that infamous flashbang combo ready to go with four sets of Kevlar here. Going towards lower, Beast Blade coming in thick and fast, Alex. Oh, Amaneki's full flash, he can't quite find the corner. No, not gonna be punished by the aggression just yet as Tarek and Breeze, they're charging straight up towards the site. Close quarters, not quite hitting the shots. And Amanek, he's still alive, how? What's going on? He's still breathing, still hits shots. Double kill for him to open things up. Dust gonna settle just for a moment. Ethan and Breezy have the sight. Stamp from behind though, he strikes onto Jax. It's a double kill, Lucky's gone too. And just Keo, filling in 4G2, now has to do it all. <laughs> yeah, and he's getting a bullet to the face for his troubles here. He will be left in the with the impossible task now of a retake towards that B bomb side. Not gonna happen. It's the drop of death from Stanislaw that yields three frags. A quick B split there from Evil Geniuses. It works out very well indeed. G2 managed to get a couple of frags, got to see if Amanek, it was looking decent to open things up there, but it fell apart very quickly indeed. Here's the replay, Amanek. You could see fighting oh. at those B doors. It looked like that was enough there. That but was a still, mess. Yeah, he manages to get such a massive amount of damage there, but it wasn't quite enough. As we get into round number two, no force fight again here. The French will just be bringing out a pretty much full eco. They've got one flashbang as Amanek gets tagged as he has a little peek through the doors there. Shouldn't be too much trouble considering we've got four rifles on the Evil Genius' side. Two of those are Galil's, a scout for Cirque. As we'll see if they can make this one a clean encounter. Three members of G2 towards short. Stan's gonna be tested here. They're gonna push through doors as well. He makes his presence known, fires the shots. They accelerate up middle instead. Looking to perhaps catch one on the flank. Cirque's there with the scout though. Oof. And that's an easy shot. Jax presents his head. Oh, the tweaks though, the sounds good for G2, doesn't look too good for G2. <laughs> it did sound great, like, wow, all those headshots, there's going to be a load of kills coming that way. But instead, it's Stanislaw just box. dishing out three headshots himself, and indeed, through the box. It sounded great, but wasn't actually going to find them much at all. But the good news is, we have got a match pause here, technical, unfortunately, but it is on the EG side, which I think is good news, considering it was Kiyoshima had yeah, problems before. Precisely, yeah, and even Stan saying one second afterwards, I don't think we can get too panicked too quickly. Here are the sounds, it must have been coming just through the edge of the box because he couldn't have anyone in his line of sight at the time. Pre-fires perhaps with the USP. Evil geniuses have been described by the analyst desk as, you know, a quick 2-0, a third of G2 can win Dust 2. It's a map that they have had uh, a bit of an issue with. Actually, earlier on in New York, I remind you that they fell on Dust 2 to Liquid, and it was a 16-3. It was a real whitewash on a map they had a 90% win rate on. So it hasn't been perfect since keo has been filling in the shoes of Shogs. Yeah, absolutely true. Well, no kits available and no AWP for the big man himself, Kenny S. And actually, three players with helmets as well. Maybe the way it's the evil genius is making their way through the mid doors here. Very quick approach. You see two towards the tunnels as well. They are not slowing down whatsoever. Kiyoshima does damage, but don't have to find a frag here. Nice flank coming in from the CTs, and this could be enough. Four and four, no kits, Alex. One of the most difficult bomb sites to retake. Zerk's going to punch in the digits and will be uncontested. The Molotov keeping them at bay on window, that was thrown out by the tunnel's player. Cirque again, fills wow. the feed with his scout. Doesn't even need the big green to get going. Almanac's the only one close. Tarek will upgrade and hope to contest if there's anyone remaining. That is a full rifle you can take away from him. He does so, Almanac gone. And the rest will scarper away to save. It's Jax and Kenny keeping hold of their M4s and their Kevlar vests. I say keeping hold, not sure. Jax was considering a look towards T-Spawn and stands on the hunt. Yeah, they'll certainly give it a go, but you can see Sanas has got that killer instinct right now. He is hungry for blood, but instead receives a face full of lead. And it'll be Kenny S holding onto the M4A1S. Will he be able to do it? He actually does a decent job there. So he doesn't have the AWP just yet, but he holds onto the rifle. But overall, 3-0 to EG. They are the absolute heavy favorites going into this one. Yeah. If you're not aware, Kiyoshima has not joined full-time. Even with their great success here, he will be departing after this tournament. He is just here to 
fill in uh, while they need him. And he's done a great job. He's delivered on all fronts and uh, putting himself in a shop window, I'd say, Alex. And for yeah. future teams, I'm sure we'll see more of him. Yeah, I quite like the uh, description Trace used of like putting himself on a billboard. Because okay, if, yeah. if, you, if you open the stream, you know, you're driving by, you will see Keo to see how he frags out. For now, it's Jax to get the first frag in this crucial start on Dust 2. Initial three picked up from Evil Geniuses. And now operating at a disadvantage early on their T side. It will mean that they have to make some sacrifices somewhere. There will be a gap. For now, Tarek responsible for long, which is the gap I was expecting to open up. Instead, just two starting to battle for control of short. So, advantage for the friends so far. Boost into a city spawn. This is a very powerful position, and one that is sometimes overlooked. You can bait players in there as well. You are absolutely covered if you crouch, but it can be pre-fired once you show yourself. We'll see whether it works out for Kenny. He holds one of the few rifles they have. It's Jax of the AK-47 taking down Breezy to open things up. Minute on the clock, and a long take looking likely here to defend it. Jax still there with Lucky. They've actually got decent positioning as the blue bin. It's being utilized. Lucky gets the free, and it's actually looking very good right now. Molotov in hand, and Lucky doesn't deploy it as the bomb goes down. He sees the bomb. He can't get the shots, though. That That's... is a tough one. He had to hit one of those. That, that was on a bit of a plate for him there. It's difficult to operate the Krieg if you're not used to it. It's not a go-to weapon for you, but I felt like he had a frag there, Alex. Kenny's not even on the site. Locked out now by the smokes. He can't really contest it. Paranoid about short, and rightfully so. He took twice eyes on the smoke. Oh, it could have been. Instead, Amanek from short does connect. Starts, shuts down Stan, gives them a chance. Zerk still firing on the site, though. Ethan to support from Carr. Both coming from short, no kits. None of those rifles step in, oh. and it will be sad to line them up. Bit of an awkward finish there for G2. I think they're just trying to pick up the weapons with the flashbang deployed and see whether they could steal one away or maybe find a quick kill, but it will be Evil Geniuses stabilizing there. It goes 4-0 as G2 will bring out the AWP for the first time in the hands of Kenny S, of course. Tarek has got that long swarm. We spoke about that earlier in the Liquid game. You're more than likely going to take that almost every single opportunity. You can beat the CTs there, depending on their spawns, and then it's great for an opening pick. It'll be Tarek looking likely to take that shot as he makes his way towards long doors now. No CT presence on that side of the map. He's got out cleanly here. Smoke down to the corner. Ideally, you want to get a player towards the pit. Fall back and start pincering the A side from short, and it's apply pressure and wait for reactions here. The CTs have to do something about this, considering the fact they've given up prime real estate in the form of long A. Let's see if we do get the due reaction. Jax on short, Keo doors. It's just Kenny responsible for any presence up long. He does have his magic stick, though, and he has been in form. Given additional freedom, the desk outlined that Keo filling in and G2 having the roster drama that they are does mean that there's going to be a big weight relieved from Kenny in terms of the limitations of calls and strategy. Both gained by Ethan, though he knows the flank's coming in. That's a huge call from him, and now he can give them a taste of their own Damn, that's a great shot from Breezy, absolutely right. Ethan doesn't have to pull the trick on those players towards long, but he's certainly given the information to Sark, who delivers. There's two kills, and he'll actually confirm the round victory as well. It's a five versus one. Amanek on the other side of the map. G2 understandably struggling against one of the best teams of this tournament. Evil Geniuses have been turning heads here. They right. have looked fantastic. I mean, they have done what Liquid couldn't. They've yes. beaten Astralis. That's right, in the best of three, no less. And on prime maps as well, dust to an inferno, are you kidding me? That's pretty yeah. insane. Yeah, man, that's not the first time either. Back to back, Brooklyn oh. and Berlin. God, they are just dialed in. Yeah. Saving nuts. your weapon is a challenge versus these guys. They did it the first time, not the second. And so five to zero, a flying start. And the conversation that is I mean, rightfully being started by analysts and fans alike is, yeah. Who is the best team in North America? I mean, you know what? It start, that conversation will be started very firmly in, in New York. Device's words, even stronger than that. He said that he believes Evil Geniuses, should they win this, could be part of the world's best conversation. I mean, that seems like a bit of a leap, but I mean, the fact that the, the man who's lost to them, played against them, is saying it, there's, there's method there. I feel like as well, the fact they've signed of EG, this like historic pedigreed order, it's going to kind of light the fire beneath them as well. I've been hyped for this lineup even when they're in NRG. They yeah. look so good, but now they're coming back with this new organization. They seem, uh, they seem so hyped up. They seem ready for this. Yeah, this is uh, really exciting to see them playing in this sort of manner. They are the heavy favorites. I can't stress that enough against G2 considering their circumstances, but G2 on Dust2, you can play at a puggy style, Chad mentioned, and hopefully we'll see them come online here, but it has to be a partial buy for now. Kiyoshima challenging towards middle, gets a bullet through the door, down to 10 HP. They've got a couple of smokes to operate with, 
And now Keo is hoping he can find the head of the player towards top and middle. That is going to be Stanislaw. Only Kevlar vest can be seen on Lucky, using their strength in numbers, or at least hoping so. Well, these are the sort of rounds, if you can win them, it gets you right back in the game. You know, if you can steal this one away and win them with pistols, all of a sudden you start breaking the money down and it can be a, a very quick turnaround. But that's if you can win them. G2 certainly have the players capable and Tarek maybe called the nade out in his hand. It's going to be the flashbang on the corner and bullets as well. But will they push around the corner of the Deagles? They certainly will. Kenny S, does he fancy a second? He's having another go. Tagged him up. Down three versus three. You said these rounds can get awkward, and they already have another tag. This time, Keo can't quite finish the job. He was tagged up by Cirque. Now he's returned the favor. 50 seconds. This round's going to almost reset as they back away. Bombs at T spawn. Round starts now. 50 seconds. 3v3. Oh, 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 easy. Get him out of here. He does make it look easy. Ethan from B. And just like that, the chance G2 had has been squandered, that's, taken away from them. That's such an unreal shot. I'm stunned. Unbelievably quick. Yeah, well, Amanek, once again in a compromised situation. Bombs going towards B, and it looked a bit dice dicey at one stage, yeah, but Evil Geniuses look nothing but comfortable towards the end there of round number six. The amount of times where as soon as what was NRG, now EG was playing, every time I'd refresh social media, I'd see professional Counter Strike players tweeting about Breezy. Every yeah, time. He's so good. Now, him and Ethan, like, we've been talking about those for the last year or so. Like, yeah. They're so unbelievably good. In terms of mechanical skill, Look it's difficult that. to find many players better than them. There's, it's nothing. It's, looks, it's a bit of dust on his monitor. Yeah. It's the tip of an opponent's head, and it, he just hits it. But he, he aimed and shot with such conviction. Yeah. That's what impressed Stop me about shooting. it. He knew he got that kill. He just stopped shooting. He just knew it was done. Madness. And so aggressive this time in towards the site. Early out short. Kenny does get the first and is unable to back away. The flash will lock him out and enable the cross. Good incendiary. That should buy them some time here, but Stanislaw. Oh, oh look at him go. He will get the frag, but surely Drax will shade him out here. There it is. It's looking good now. Four on two in favor of G2. Bomb to be planted in Cirk. Oh, he's got a bit of a shooting gallery. Brewing towards long here. Three players there, but he has to focus towards short for now. No one coming from short. There's one from CT. Easy. Oh, does get caught by that presence. It was Keo rotating from his early B aggression. And now all on Cirque, looking for a 1v4. Has the bomb down, uncharacteristic miss, but now numbers, he's gonna be overwhelmed. Cool. Just the first. It's a gorgeous connection onto Lucky, but that will be the first for G2. Seven rounds in, and the first on the board for the French. The underdogs, no less. Well, that was still EG presenting a very fast game there. Up towards short, not much method behind the man. This is challenging in numbers towards short with a couple of flashbangs over the top. Kenny S, though, he's very used to that angle. Played it for years towards that car position and hitting those shots, it's no problem. He gets the first and slows them right down. And at that stage, G2 started to stabilize. They now have the double orb set up. The Amanek to join Kenny S and the sniping responsibilities. And we've seen G2 present a pretty decent double orb setup, especially uh, over in Berlin where they had a pretty decent run. Yeah. And obviously we don't have shocks here anymore, but we have seen the likes of Lucky and Amade pick up the weapon at times. I think probably my biggest standout from seeing G2 uh, prior to their roster changes, the announcement that the roster would be undergoing some changes, yes. was Jax. I think he as an individual really impressed me in Berlin. Uh, he does seem to be one, one of those players that can do a lot with a little. Put a P250 in his hands, I'm thinking of one round, but, yeah, that, but on I'm train. not generalizing <laughs> here, I promise. It, he has been consistently able to deliver regardless of what weapons put in his hand. For now, comfortable full buy for G2 off the back of their round win. Yeah, this is where they want to be, the double orb setup. And it's classic, it's favorable, and they'll be up against Cirque, who is hitting most of his shots so far. He's stopped bragging with Ethan and Stanislaw on eight as they boost a player up towards short once again. This that is, is going to be Amalek. Look at that, two of them have just held W from spawn straight through the doors. Cirque is peaking window at one minute 40. This is something. And G2, well, they're going to get a big red flag waving. They already have middle. Looking to advance it now. They are using him, the spear, oh, to find a way into the site. Nice work on the trade from Jax, but he's met by Stan. Numbers still favor EG. Certainly do. One minute 15 remaining as well. The A site is completely open for business here. If the bomb goes down, you don't even want to consider this retake if you're on the G2 side. EG have this one tied up from what I can see so far. I can see the French actually starting to fall back at this stage, head towards that B site. 
let this one slip by. Kenny S will try and contest for any crossing players towards the long position, but nothing has to be done. Round is completed as far as EG are concerned. I mean, what was that? Uh, not it's... only the first peak, but the, the fact that they're willing... Cirque is taking that fight on short so early and so confidently with the support of his teammates. Dust 2 has these strange tendencies. It can be played in a puggy manner, and even if you're the more experienced and drilled team, you can play to that kind of level as well. If you right. feel like your, your momentum's working out, you've seen so far EG hitting every single shot. They've realized there's weaknesses, and everyone's going to be expecting a default, right? If you're yeah. playing against a, a, a drilled team, sure, run the defaults, but when there's obvious holes that need to be plugged, you want to just be abusing them with the, the fact they won't be necessarily prepared for a change of pace. They won't have the setups they're used to. They'll just be playing a very standard game on the G2 side. You can see just running through the mid doors. It yields so much fruit for them. The fact he's looking towards that B window so early on, it's difficult to even recover from that. You don't have the same protocols as you would in a solid team. You're not right. reclaiming territory elsewhere. You're just panicking and trying to work out what the hell is going on at this point. And why is there an author outside the B bomb site with one minute 30 on the clock? Yeah, I mean, it's, not, it's, it's protocols and it's communication. There's yeah. likely, you know, communication gets more and more succinct and effective the more you talk, what, talk to get to each other and play together. For now, it's going to be it's going to be erratic. That's for sure. Yeah, this is a great game from Stan so far in terms of their calls. Like he's yeah. managing this very well. Well, for now, G2 do save weaponry. Of course, it's the Krieg for Kiyoshima. Kenny S with the AWP on shore. A classic angle for him. Kyo will have his work cut out for them if they do commit towards this B bomb site. And Cirque is walking in, and he's hungry for blood here. Smokes, flashes. Pretty much everything but the kitchen sink thrown towards tunnels to keep them at bay is just going to be Ethan left to fire off some shots. Battle, tracers versus tracers. Very spread out T side though. Stark contrast to what we saw in our first series of the day. Lots of four man pushes instead. EG are quite happy to operate in these packs, pockets of fragging. Ability. Just the two of them poking their head through middle. It was Tarek and Stan, now joined by Cirque. 50 seconds for their advance. They'll make their way towards shore for now. On posturing that position. I like this from Kenny. He knows he needs to get some intel here. A kill would be idyllic, but instead he receives a bullet to the head. It's going to be breezy. What a fantastic shot there. And the fact he's taken down an AWP as well, you can pretty much confirm that Long should be clear at this stage. But Jax is there on the other side. Lucky he's a couple of uh -oh. kills here. He gets a dink off, but I don't think he gets the frag because he's run out of bullets on the M4, desperately trying to scramble for any sort of kill they can get here. But the bomb's going to be planted. A five on four. I speculate even in this situation, they might even save again, Alex. They are very spread out. Amanek towards the top of long. Breezy could find him. He could, oh, the timing. It's good enough. Ow. Hits the spray. <laughs> <laughs> He's checking it. And now Lucky, Keo, Jax, they're all in different parts of the map. They'll get some frags, sure. But the chances of advancing towards that site just seem like a distant dream. Stands low. Ethan there to support. And, well, just jumping into the jaws of Cirque in that kind of stance. Lucky towards CT, he hasn't moved a muscle, and Zerk is just hunting. Yeah, he's feeling himself I, right now. You see that movement as well, and the confidence yeah. in his own ability? That's sick. I, it, the way, when you talk to him, he yeah. does have a, that air of confidence in his own ability. You can see yeah. it in the server as well. He knows he's good. He is very good. He's <laughs> one of my favorite all in yeah. the on every got single flair. time. Yeah, he really does. But considered and, you know, well thought out flair. This isn't the, the flicks that will end up on Reddit, but you'll end up with, you know, 20 ADR. Yeah, the, what they have to present right now on Dust2, it, it works out so well for him. Breezy, surely taken down at this stage. It will be Amanek to find the opening frag, but Stanislaw's there to respond. Now it'll be Jax removing the equation. Kenny has still the AWP, currently sits on three and seven. He's had the orb a few times. It's not for lack of trying. It's just not working out for him. And now spotting across from B. It's going to be Evil Geniuses probing the long position, but it will be Amanek ready and waiting for them on the other side of those doors. Good info from Keo. Got the push, got the timing. That they can react accordingly. He's even going to be able to call that the entirety of T-Spawn is quiet. This is the moment. Amanek needs at least two. If he gets nothing, it's another round going in favor of EG. It's a great position. This could work out. Flash. The void it gets the first, can't get the second. That's a start. Bomb loose. They know where it's going. Or where it was going, I should say past tense. Keo could lock them in though. Kenny and Keo, it is quite a brutal box to be locked in. You can't go either way without meeting lead. And so Cirque and Tarek looking to go two versus three. From behind, Keo, he made no secret of his presence and Cirque wasn't ready for it. Just Tarek then, looking to go 1v3. Not today, Lucky finds the second for G2. 
Now remember, we talked about it before when Liquid were playing. It's the T side that seem to have these huge score lines, so it's not necessarily alarm bells going off for G2 right now. They need to be posting four or five rounds to give themselves a fighting chance here. That was a decent round. Good flank from Kiyoshima. That really confirms things. Doesn't give them an opportunity to even get close towards the bomb site. Removes the orb of Cirque, of course. And now money starting to be spread a little bit thinner on the T side. We'll see if they can keep it up here. Looking for damage on the cross, but smoke goes down. And it'll be another default round here from EG. Nothing too fast-paced by the looks of things. Yeah, we saw G2 winning, you know, coming back from 11 rounds to four halves with the 12-3 T side. I mean, we've, we saw that in Berlin. So keeping things competitive is certainly still within, the, within reach here on Dust2 with their map pick. Analysts calling it a must-win for these underdogs to, well, complete the underdog fairy tale story. Tarek's got to be feeling good. New Jersey, successful team, playing his favorite video game on the uh, very streets he was born. In front of a crowd cheering him on. Okay, we need to work on the EG chance here. We what don't do really think, have anything think solid. It be? I'm going to work on something for yeah, half time, maybe. EG. But uh, yeah, you guys need to work on it as well, because we haven't really got much in terms of chance here. Oh, here we go. There we go. A bit louder. Yeah. A bit louder. Go. We've done Let's Go. We've done that a yeah, lot. Yeah, we have, but it's something else. What about like Easy E G? Easy E G. Easy E G. That's not bad. That's not bad. Do the Americans say Z or Z? Which one's which? They say know. Z. Okay. Well, Easy G. G G. G G. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if Amanek can open things up. That's a great shot. The talents them four don't see it too often, but it delivers a lovely opening frag there, and he might get a second as well. Amanek though completely ran over by the Krieg of Breezy, and that's going to be Tarek on the flank there, trying to contain him towards the A bomb site. Still a three on three, a fighting chance. This retake is worth it. Kenny is on the A W P, and Jackson towards T spawn. No utility on the T side, and they have smokes and flashes on the G2 side of things. Time to coordinate. That's a smoke for tunnels. That will make things awkward for Cirque. Oh, and awkward for G2. Yeah, for Jax as well. <laughs> Not quite worked out. So Jax still now has an author staring him down and catches him. That's going to be an offhand comment made on TeamSpeak for sure. And oh, oh, they Kenny they, can't even get away. They missed the smoke as well. Just yeah, that's what that. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it would have uh, made things very difficult for him either way with the smoke down. But there it is, EG. Close things out, no problem at all there. It is going to be 9 to 2. We'll see if this is where G2 with the save weapon. Can he manage to save the orb? I don't no, think he got he caught. Just... Okay, so it's just going to be the one AK 47 for Lucky. Uh, the third tactical timeout. When you. You're in the first half, Alex, and you're in your third timeout. You know things really aren't looking good for yourselves. That's where you're desperate and uh, you need a miracle at this stage. And they just don't have the resources in the strap to really fall back onto anything. They right. don't have uh, Shoxi here, of course, as Kiyoshima, a ringer coming in. And I think Jordan touched there uh, very well uh, in the pregame for this one. Yeah, sure, he can do what he wants. They can have be a little bit more jovial about things. They can certainly be happy. And if they're having a great day and yeah. things are just working out from their pug style, fantastic. But if things aren't, if they're not really finding that momentum and they're just getting blown out the water in every single individual duel, what's the go-to here? What are you what going do to you do? Say? You've got Kenny S, who's been lighting it up all tournament long. He's got four and eight right now, and round number 12 on Dust2, his home map. And if he's not firing up and finding multiple kills with the orb, like, what do you lean towards here? What's the play? Look at the spawn from Cirque. He's going to seize that one, heading straight towards Long. He's got the blinkers on. One thing in mind, and that's first blood. And he gets it with ease. Breezy's flashbang was there as well. But Jax, he doesn't even get a chance to play this round. Round 12, he'll be watching from the sidelines. To re-aggress on Long, they'll get the information that it hasn't been committed on. But still, getting that early frag, the CT's now forced to operate with just two on either side of the map and using that smoke to perhaps pool their resources, a bit of an all-in towards one half of the map. Well, it was Cirque to open things up. No damage taken whatsoever, and it's just desperate. The overall complexion of G2, they have no kits, no grenades on three players. Kenny with a smoke and incendiary remaining, but there's no real conversation. We had the B side completely open. It's what you'd call a gamble stack, right? There's hoping if they do somehow go towards A, sure, they'll, they'll fight for it. But if they go B, they're going to have to give this one up. Lovely smoke sequence there from EG. Just plugging all the holes is a guaranteed round already. The fact that Kyo is spraying like that, that they can probably tell that they've got this one under lock and key. Yeah, they are going to do 
their due diligence, though, and I think that's uh, a trend we've noticed from all of the teams competing here. Stralis Liquid from the previous semi-final. Even when it looks like the round is a freebie, you can still see restraint. Check your corners. And so this will be another one for EG. Ten already, my goodness. Yeah, it's running away from them here. I feel like we only just got going. And this is the pick of G2 as well, bear in mind. So it's going to be difficult to recover. We will see Lucky with the AK-47. Jax, the player to be removed. The only frag found at this point at EG. They can definitely justify a hunt here. The, the horn's been signaled. They're going to be exploring their options. You can see the two players outside long, two pushing oh this God. position on the A side. They're coming for you, G2. <laughs> and they're not oh! missing a single beat. <laughs> As Kiyoshima and Kenny S try and desperately hold on to what they have here. Decent positioning for Kenny, just needs to hold on here and they will keep two weapons up. There's something to talk about because the next round's still going to be rough with three players at $3,400. You don't see that every day in a semi-final, do you? Just a 5v4 battle to save your weapons. Yes, indeed. Gosh. Okay. SMGs are going to be coming out, one, at least one for Lucky. See that again. That was how the round ended. That was the only real frag, actually, uh, before the bomb went down. It started so fast from Cirque, given the gift of that spawn. But we saw it's not always a guarantee. So the first game, ooh, okay. Straight shot from Ethan. They walked straight towards the A site, received by Kenny, though. There's a lot of CTs here. They may be overcommitting somewhat. Stan trying to bail his teammate out. A bottle of flame, perhaps, here we go. to slow them down. And now Kenny again in the feed. Double kill from him on the M4. Ethan trying to battle his way almost out of this as they are all leaning towards the A site. Caught again. Ethan still alive, still fragging. Oh, he's been here the whole time. They leap into him. What was that? Flying through the sky leaves Keo 1v2. Can make it a 1v1 easy. Now looking to find the solution. It's the problem. Tags him up beautifully and there you go. G2 take three. I can't believe what Sark just did to them there. He essentially bayoneted the player. Looked like he had a Locked in kill, a guaranteed frag, just to close things out there. Another fast paced round from EG, and he almost stole back the 4 2 lead. It seemed G2 had guaranteed themselves there. Let's have a look at the replay. Shots are all over the place. It's a very scrappy and chaotic round. You see 1 minute 30 on the clock, and we've got that sort of duel going on. Yeah. Insane scenes here. And uh, we're getting to the next round straight away. It's 10 3. Like we said, if they can get five on the CD side, it's actually not as bad as it feels right now. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. I've seen G2's T-side on Dust2, admittedly, not against the beast that is Evil Geniuses, certainly in this iteration, this form that they've adopted coming to NY, New Jersey, and looking fantastic so far. He means New Jersey as in the clothing. The, the New Jersey, yes. not New Jersey. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even thought about yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> These two rounds, crucial for G2 to be able to fall back. Somewhat of a pillow for them to rest their T-side head on. Slower this time. Ethan has let go of W this round, <laughs> which is nice. Same game. He was at Gandalf so fast. Yeah, ridiculous. All for Kenny. Four M4s around them. They win the previous round, but if they lose this one, they're in a lot of trouble. Amanek, he's got a decent advantage here. If he pushes now, Ethan's low. He should be able to find this frag. No problem, but Ethan, with the fancy footwork, does sneak back. Somehow is ready to challenge for more there, even though one bullet would take him down. It's the B split coming in once again. Four players focusing towards middle. They're going to flash over and give it everything they've got. I don't feel good for Kiyoshima here. He's going to struggle with this one, but he gets one through the smoke. That's not bad at all. Amanek not as clean, but he does find one frag. Is it enough? It could be. Three on two advantage for G2, but Sark is ready and waiting towards middle. Does he detect the presence from Jax? He does, but he's not quite there in time. It's your boy, New York. He's on two frags already, looking to get another two right now. One versus two for the retake. It's going to be a double peak. He can't handle it. Great work from G2. They knew he'd have to investigate, try and level the odds, find two 1v1s, and so they waited and are rewarded. It will be the fourth for G2, one away from that five-round goal that Henry set for them. Well, there it is. It looked like Sark had done enough there when he started using his crosser towards top and middle, kind of speculate as to where they could be coming from. I thought he had it. It looked like he was going to get the third, but not quite. And it's going to be due to winning the round. And like he just said, yeah, they can get five here. They're actually in a great spot. I don't think we've seen EG have to do a single eco at this point. They've just been running away with this one. Uh, but they're going to have a couple of compromises. It's going to be Sark with no utility whatsoever and no helmets. Ethan with the Galil. So a great chance here for G2 to close this one out with a successful round before the half. 
Let's see. The last chance to see the French CT side here on Dust2 in pursuit of their fifth. Smoke to bait the push, and it's worked out perfectly. Kenny, perhaps he's the genius in this round. And note, the nade doesn't quite catch Stan. That was the target he was hoping to finish off. Second nade, the same. So they have the presence on short. The bomb yet to commit, though, and it's in the hands of Serku. 16 frags to his name. Yeah, he's been so. looking fantastic. And he joins the party. It does look like they're going to be committing to this. Who's there to receive? Lucky CT. It will be Kenny and Jax. Well, here comes the final play from EG. Flashes to go over. And Kenny S has to hit a couple of showstoppers here. It's difficult shots to land, but no problem for a player of his caliber. It's going to be Stanislaw going down, but they have got close enough to decide to at least enable themselves to plan here. Kenny S uh -oh. under pressure here, but delivering on all fronts. He finds a man advantage once again. It's a four on three in round 15. That wasn't far off finding Sir towards a site. My God, he took a shot. Now, Ethan. Look to destabilize, he can't use his target, and it's gone perfectly. The French one frag away, it's just Cirque. They can double peek him, he's only got the AWP, he can't surely get a second shot off, he'll be shut down by Lucky. And so the half ends, 10 to 5. G2, they have that T side, but they've got the cushion. They have five rounds to play with. It was a brutal half, but in terms of rounds picked up, that's more than enough. G2 can still do something with this. They'll be switching over to the T side now, and that's where Kenny can really show us what he's made of. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, this one's going to warm up. Stay with us, and we'll see you after the half.
The G2 roster plagued by roster issues stand against evil geniuses in a semi-final. Individual flair got them here. Now they stand against potentially North America's finest. The grand final is on the cards. A best of three between these two teams. It starts on dust two. Our analysts suggesting it has to be here where G2 make their mark. Our machine, he's Henry G. And 10-5, a bit of redemption at the very end of the first half. Absolutely. The fact they got those three rounds towards the very end of that first half actually makes it pretty respectable. There is a chance now. They absolutely needed those three rounds. But here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, half number two about to begin. Evil Geniuses will switch over to the CT forces here. They've got themselves one kit, four sets of Kevlar, and a P. 250 is in the hands of Lucky. We'll see what he can do with it, as he'll have one smoke, three flashbangs as well. Suggest they won't go towards long. There's the Xbox smokes deployed, and Sir looking to push past it. There's going to be so many there to receive him. He's ready, ready. Tapped up one head, traded though. Lucky's flash did catch Sirk. Breeze, restraint. <laughs> Might take the shot when I imagined he would. Instead, played the waiting game, but they have the information. Retreating towards long. Will G2 really commit on this? They know the information was there, they pushed top mid, but it looks like they are. Well, now they're kind of contained towards long. They have to commit off this. They, they can't go back. They have no idea what's waiting for them in T-spawn. Breezy, however, he'll be on towards short. Good flashbang. They gained them some access here. That's enough just to get past the crossover. I would say advantage G2 at this stage. But there is a player towards Gandalf and a head removed in the form of Jax. And Tarek oh! can just tap away Amanek. Gets off the pop bomb for just a second. He taps away at the head two now, locked out on long. He's going for the frag. The bomb's right in front of him. Kyo, as soon as he makes his presence known, they can get on that. And now the defuse likely will come in. Finished off by Breezy to ensure safe defusal. Yeah, that's pretty but wild. That was, that, they had the sight. They had the numbers. I, I didn't spot the player towards Gandalf when I said that. I was actually pretty legit. The fact that Breezy was forced off, it looked like they actually had an open A side there. But Tarek swinging out. It was a difficult shot for him to land, but he absolutely railed the player that planted the bomb. And at that stage, overwhelmed, G2 will have to force by into the second. So you can see that player towards Gandalf yeah. there. Breezy hits that shot as well. Tarek just gets closer and closer. And they don't really miss a shot at all. So one AK-47, make it two. A couple of Deagles and the scout as well. These rounds are very powerful indeed, and so Sir, but he'll be the first one to take damage as he drops the 62 points of health, and Jax dodges the flames. He's got himself by blue bin. Very aggressive take, and Breezy read Molotovs to ensure he can take this fight solo, Ooh. but Jax, that's the precision we were talking about. Doesn't matter what weapon's in his hands. This time, a quick connection with the AK-47. This is a, I mean, who has the advantage? I mean, let's pretend Breezy's still alive. Look yeah. at this buy, two deagles, that no armor on them. How, who had the advantage in this one? Uh, it's difficult to say. It's certainly a big talking point yeah. in CSGO right Crazy. now. I think it's something that will be adjusted in the next few moments. It feels like this is a little bit too powerful. You get a bomb down in that pistol, but still. Uh, you've got to take your advantages where you can find them. Ethan trying to recover the situation. Pushes towards lower B. He does significant damage towards Lucky, but it's not quite enough. Five versus three now. Cirque already low, using the scout, trying to find an opening if he can. He can't nail the shot, though. There it is. Connects with one. He just needs to keep applying pressure if possible. The nade lands as well. The flashbang goes over. He's got a chance to get a frag here. Doesn't nail that shot. He's surely gone. Yeah, Jax does find himself another frag before traded by Tarek, but... With just two standing, this looks like an impossible task. Certainly with Stanislaw still on B. Just leaving Tarek to do as much damage as he can. Ooh. And it's confirmed. Bomb goes down, as does Tarek. And G2 right back at it, keeping things competitive. If this was converted, you're looking at, you know, 13, 14 before the hearts yes. got going. Disaster. Instead, they stabilize. This will be 11-6. Yeah, and this is pretty standard. For anyone who's maybe not up to date with current matter, the bomb is planted in the T side. Uh, even if you lose the pistol, you'll be buying up into the next round. Like, it's so powerful, especially if you get two or three kills in that mix as well. It means you can at least get two AK-47, some deagles, and as we saw, the scouts as well. And uh, it is very powerful. And on the T side, especially with the AK versus M4 slash for mass conversation, uh, there is uh, an argument to be made that it is more powerful than winning uh, the, the CT pistol, which is uh, a little bit odd, but it is part of the game today, and it's always exciting to see how those rounds go down. Evil Geniuses might be forced to actually buy up into this round because they would be double eco regardless. Even if they didn't send it, spend a single penny, it would be two eco. So they might as well buy into this with the save for mass and see what can be done. This was a great shot from Jax. What a lovely opener that was. And now they're right back in the game. That was a round they had to win. And uh, it's a clean one as well. Kiyoshima, nice lock on towards the rotating CT player. That's a really nice shot from him. And we'll see the force by come through. 157, couple of deagles, and that's saved for mass. Tarek has the scout. Now, if I'm a G2 fan, I am nervous as heck. 
Yeah. Up against these pistols. They've got, they're going to have to be restrained. There's, there's degrees of protocols that just won't be in place against buys like this. It's where something janky can get pulled out by evil geniuses. For now, no funny business. They're setting Ethan up to trade off Breezy's death on short. Oh, and look at that. That's a double nade. Oh, it's a left, right, and it's not quite good night, but they're already tucked in. Hamanek. Get tagged up in the process. I think it was a, a battle with Stan on the tunnels that actually caught him. Now aggression starts to show. Circ through the doors. Let's not forget there is a weapon in play as well, Henry. There absolutely is. That Famas was saved in the previous round, and Santa's law can be deadly with it. It's up to Ethan, though. We've seen his aim so far, but they're unable to connect the dots in round number 18. It's going to be a five on three with Breezy on just 23 points of health. Looks like G2 have done enough here. Remember, this will be full eco next round. If evil geniuses are unable to make anything of this, which is not looking very likely at this point. So towards short, they'll go. Nothing too flashy required here. It's Tarek waiting with the scouts and Almanac. Perfect position. He's got a guaranteed frag there towards Stan. Or maybe not. <laughs> but I knew I shouldn't have said that. There's no guarantees in life. Yeah. Stan is law. He's just going to be left to his own devices. It was. Uh, a quick catch on Amanek. Admittedly, most of the hard work was done earlier on by himself. He just finished off what he started. And he's just going to be holding and hoping a foolish G2 player chooses to exit through long. It's highly unlikely. And so this round will give G2 their seventh. Shocks in vitality. Yeah. I haven't quite processed that yet. Well, from what I can assume, it will just be the case of like, he's just not going to be an in-game leader anymore. He just wants to focus on being right. a straight up counter-strike rifle. Like, you know, there's something, no pressure. We'll be told what to do. That would be great. And I feel like that was uh, a real problem for G2 towards the end of their lifespan. It wasn't really clear who was going to be doing what. They were changing yeah. rosters very regularly. And it wasn't ever like they ever got comfortable, really. He gave an interview with HLTV, I think, when he, when, when it, he talked about leadership and then moving away from it, where sure. he said that once you've done it, it's hard not to Absolutely. have, not to want to be on the microphone, want to say something. Yeah, because you've had all the experience and you feel like the person in charge of that responsibility isn't necessarily playing to the level you expect or the philosophy that you yeah. feel is the correct one. It's difficult to keep your mouth shut at times and just accept it. It can cause arguments even if you don't intend well, it. Well, you better hope they issue a gag order, otherwise Alex is going to be getting undermined <laughs> and it gets awkward. Uh, Still. A rush here, I think. Going to be a quick one, it looks like. Yep, just charging in towards the B site. No one's home. It's a good feeling. Yeah, just bees clear. Like, you've one got, minute forty. You've got a bit of anxiety when you're making your way towards those tunnels. <laughs> you're just like, there could be a five-man stack here. We don't, we yeah. don't know. No flashes. You're like, okay, that's nice. No Molotovs. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. If you don't see the Molotovs or anything like that, you're, you're in a good position. So it looks like Kiyoshima with an opening frag should confirm things. It'll just be down to Stanislaw to try and save the weapon if possible. He's on five AP right now, but it looks like he's safe. Pushing in with the USB. They still managed to take one frag. There is an M4 picked up by Stan. I'll be bringing that into the next round and. Nothing too much to get worried about. Oh, I'm not sure he will. Oh, I say that. Amanek's got his perfect weapon for the job. And one click of his Mac 10 and it's paid <laughs> essentially for itself. He pulls over an M4. Quite the upgrade. Yeah, that's not bad at all. G2 are in this now. They want entirely. And all off the back of the fact that they didn't let EG convert off their yep. pistol. That's a very good point. Cirque, though, brings out the big green. AWP in hand and 18 kills his name so far. The first time out from EG. Like we said, it's these T sides that seem to build up so much momentum. You get to dictate the pace of the round. And it, we saw it earlier when you was one to push through mid doors. You want to just try and to get early information and just ruffle the feathers a little bit. Especially if you're a puggy team right now, like G2 are going to be with the stand in. It works out so well for you in that T side. You just need the resources uh, established initially. You need to get yeah. a, a round under your belt. You need to have some decent money, break the economy so you can actually find, things, you can actually find some confidence going forward into those next rounds. Worth mentioning, and uh, EG have made no secret of this, that I'm a pet does a lot of his coaching. Uh, yeah. You know, in beforehand, he's not the timeout coach. He's not going to sit there and tell them this is the round to play necessarily. Yeah. He's much more of a, you know, a pre-preparation driven coach. And so that timeout, perhaps even more, just to get all of the players talking about what they've noticed and what they plan to do for the rest of this defense. Kenny S with the long spawn and the AWP in hand. We talked about it all day long. Doesn't look like he'll deliver just yet. The flames actually Ooh, bad. just. Oh, not touching him there. So it was a chance, but the smoke will dissuade his approach and he'll fall back. So everything goes back into a default at this stage. It was all reliant on Kenny S finding that opening pick. CT still struggling financially. It's Ethan down to the MP9. He'll boost Tarek up at the looks of things. This is such a strong spot, but it's a common pre-fire. Ethan caught the nade in his hand, but he's got a kill regardless. He can't believe his luck. Wow. Just sees the fingers of Keo. 
And that's enough. Jax might want to try and get that rifle out of harm's way. Kenny, however, alongside him, they're just going to try and find the frag. This should be a quick one for Kenny if Tarek does look up. Oh, 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 oh. oh, God. His mouse mat could be about to get a little hot if he has to flick around from window to CT. We've seen him hit shots like it before on this very map. And the back presents itself. The reaction delayed from G2. Ethan just body shots him. And Kenny not going to be happy with that one. Misses the shot. Had a chance to equalize or at least take a step in that direction. Now stand towards B. Has to deal with two. They're hesitant. The flash hasn't caught any of the T side, but that doesn't matter because Stan can still take these fights, just dancing around the boxes left and right. Unpredictable and always tags, but no frags for the French. Five men still standing from Evil Geniuses. They're battered, they're bruised, but they're all still kicking. So what we've talked about so far, G2 not having certain protocols. If they don't get the initial pick they're looking for, you can see they're a little bit stunned at that point. Kenny got nothing towards long. They went back into their default. People weren't in their correct positions. You can see things got a little bit flat. Kiyoshima took it upon himself to creep out towards middle. This is a beautiful setup from EG. The fact that he didn't even have to use the boosted position suggests it went very well indeed. Stanislaw. Helped out with the flashbang from his teammates there, buys him enough time to find the all-important frags, and it's going to be EG bouncing back up, losing three rounds in a row. It's going to be 12 to 8 overall, and Jax firing off speculative shots towards Long when he takes a nade in the face for his troubles. And this is aggressive stance from him, anticipating a second as well. Same position from Kiyoshima, he goes down the exact same spot, but very different circumstances. Yeah, it's going to be a kicker. Probably not going to be allowed to be anywhere near the doors for the rest of this half. Now with Keo dead, that is one less set of utility. Admittedly, I didn't catch how much he brought into the fray. But Amanek fully loaded alongside Kenny. They'll be able to create something should they desire to commit. They've got plenty of time though, 50 seconds. It does seem like it's time to at least have a little go. Flash gonna come in from Kenny. Gonna be Jax first on the scene, but no one initially to receive them. Now they react off the back of these nades. They're running into each other. Suck is gonna be flashed off this position. And so prepares himself for what will be a very short-lived fight instead backs away. Tarek waiting towards the CD spawn boxes here. Bomb to be planted. He's waiting for an opportunity. Someone to investigate that lower area. But they're being very passive on the G2 side. They have to be. And it's a five on four against him right now. And Tarek not giving any opportunities whatsoever. He starts to creep towards the A ramp. His teammates towards long. He knows he's covered there. And he's got so tantalizingly close. They start to pincer now. It looks like the round's already done. Kenny S might be retreating this day. Nice backstab from Lucky. Gets himself a couple oh. of rounds. Can he make it three? He can't quite, but Kenny S keeps him in the round. And then on the defuse, he had to hit the shot. That was his chance. Sir keeps him alive. And EG will win the round 13 to 8 to get a little chaotic at the end there. Had they had no kit, Kenny could have had an opportunity. Cirque, though, did keep him safe. Yeah, that was reminiscent of the Elite clutch earlier. It did. They, that came down to the fact they didn't have the kit, remember? So that could have been the difference maker there, but EG they managed to pack it on the back of the belt there. Lucky, that was the only play that they could have made to try and save that round. It looked like it was just such a done deal. He gets the double spray down. Can he even hit the shot from Shaw, but still not quite enough with the defuse being held. And it will be the final timeout for G2 now. And put down the barrel of a 13-8 scoreline. EG on cruise control right now. Double up set up for the first time. It's Ethan and Cirque to wield that. Ethan, incredible aimer in general. And it uh, doesn't matter if you don't consider him a quote-unquote orper. Players of his caliber can pick up the weapon and do unspeakable things with it. Certainly on this map. I mean, it, uh, say what you want about Dust 2. There is, there is some degree of beauty in the fact that this, this map exists in a, in a map pool full of maps like Train, Overpass. This one, you can really let this mechanic shine through. And right now, mechanics for the North American side are infinitely stronger, at least on the first half. G2, however, have managed to keep things level here on the second. It's 3-3 three to three on their T side, but we said it. It's going to have to be so much more than that. They're going to have to really take control, grab this game by the reins. If they want to keep things competitive. Stan caught through the doors. Lucky. They play a game of chicken. And it's Stan to go down. Ethan trying to take that fight. He got punished for it, but he wants to re-aggress. So with the early pick found, 
G2 can really slow things down at this stage. Having three players positioned towards middle, we always talk about reactive play on Dust2. They need to be cognizant of the fact that the B push could be coming in from EG here. They've got no one watching it right now, but that's absolutely fine. CTs are starting to reposition though. Ethan might be considering his options here with the AWP outside of the B tunnels here. It's a pretty deadly position he's holding right now. One bullet would take him down, but you wouldn't necessarily expect him to be there with the orb. Breezy will hold towards long by himself, but he is a one-man army at times. That's for sure, and he has a chance to show us. Not this time. Kenny was holding that line, and Breezy just walked straight into it. It's an AWPA's dream. Advantage extended for G2. They're going to have the perfect pincer here. They can have one short, one throwing a spanner in from the doors in the form of Amanek, and three on long. Not if Cirque completely rips the short presence out from this attack. Now they can boost him up. He's going hunting. What? what? Who did he even kill? I don't understand. Three versus two, they can boost him up. They want to set him up for more, as if that was possible. Another for Cirque. This round is his, this map is his. But wait. Kenny, looking to save the day of the no-scope pits. He's not dead. Tarek converts. And EG made their 14th a stylish one. That's insane from Sir. We need to slow that one Who down to I 1%. See what's happening there. He had three players in front of him. The flick looks so <laughs> wild. I don't even know who, which one of the three it was. Okay, sure. Lovely 20th frag. Let's see number 21. Okay, sure. Uh, can we slow that down a little more? Yeah, enhance. <laughs> enhance, x-ray. Oh, Jesus. no. So remember, G2 have used all their timeouts, right? They're 14-8 down. Money is not great. The MAC-10 is being purchased for Amanek. Sometimes not a disadvantage for him. And uh, we'll see if Jackson is Galil can save the day. Kiyoshima on the AWP. I assume does he have the, the long spawn? Is this going to be firing off a shot at the start? And uh, giving the weapon back to Kenny. No damage done just yet. G2 are going to be in recovery. It's going to go about as well as M&M's did. Default continues here. EG 14, G2 8. Money broken well and truly. B split looking likely three towards the tunnel. The smoke's deployed towards the spawn position as Stannis saw with the advantageous angle. He detects the smoke and drops an incendiary back in due course. It's going to be up to Lucky here as Tarek tries to sneak through. That flashbang is fantastic. Does he have what it takes there to take down Lucky here? Oh, it's going to be a question of time. If that smoke starts to fade, Lucky's going to have the advantage, but Tarek's just using it as perfect cover now, just on the precipice of it. Lucky's to retreating, and oh, caught with a nade in his hands. He gets the timing perfect. Ethan, similarly successful, has the support of Stan, and it's a meat grinder. Everybody that comes through that tunnel comes out as pinked mush. <laughs> I absolutely agree. And it will be Kenny S with just the AWP and him. So, uh, not for long, Breezy will take care of that, put him out of his misery, and it's $3,000 per player on the G2 side. EG look very comfortable here. It's going to take seven rounds in a row, no resources available. G2 with no timeouts as well. They're just going to have to jump into this round with Mac 10s and Galil's and hope for the best here. Tarek with very patient yeah. and control play to that CD spawn position, allows his teammates to really focus on that B bomb side. That is really fantastic work there. Three Mac 10s, one Deagle, and Kenny S on the only rifle, which is the Galil. He had a really quiet first half, you remember. He's actually really turned it on here. He's at the top of the scoreboard, 16 and 15. Ooh. The long take comes in, and this is where it comes crashing down with G2. The Mac 10 trying to get the long range kill. <laughs> it looks like it's done here, I'm afraid. Five versus three. Jax with the Glock now as he throws away at the Mac 10, I believe. It does seem that he's thrown away his primary weapon here, Henry, on match point. It's that not, is correct. not ideal. So he's going to pick up his Molotov and throw a bottle of glass at them. That's what he really can do at this stage. Well, a chance for us to calm down here. It's two Mac 10s, a Glock, <laughs> and uh, not much else in the five versus three where EG are fully equipped with AKs as well, no less. Amanek gone, perhaps a weapon for Jax to scoop up. But the evil genius is, this was G2's map pick. This was the chance the nade lands perfectly. Stan, he's got the time, he's got the angle. And he's got two frags away from a 1-0 lead in the series. The transfer's not there, it's left to Lucky, converted by Ethan. 
Evil Geniuses, 1-0 up in the series, up against G2. Absolutely true. Uh, yeah, G2 showing some signs of life there, but it was inevitable at that point after the first half. And the fact they had to get three rounds in a row towards the end of the first, sure, they gave themselves a fighting chance. They had that nice spell of rounds after that second round.